Hello, this is Pastor Malin Smith, New Hope Baptist Church in Watertown, New York, and I welcome you to our video series that we're calling Morning Hope. And what we're doing in this series, we're doing a verse-by-verse -verse study of the book of 1 John. Recently, we have been undertaking a short little study within this study, dealing with the doctrine of perseverance. And so far, we have defined perseverance, namely those who endure to the end, those who have true faith in Christ, they will endure to the end. And so that's what the doctrine of perseverance actually is. We've also dealt with the matter of the grounds of our perseverance, namely the eternal security of the believer found objectively in the cross of Christ in God's purpose of grace before the foundation of the world uh, and all the work that the Spirit of God does. And so the work of God is the grounds of our perseverance. We looked last time in the last video at our experience of perseverance, and that has to do with the doctrine of assurance, the assurance of the believer. And so um, how we exercise ourselves in the various Christian disciplines will determine to what level we actually experience our assurance of salvation. Well, today we're going to talk about what I am calling various problems associated in discussions about the doctrine of perseverance because we do experience from time to time those seasons in the Christian life where we may find ourselves stumbling or struggling or we may know of persons uh, in the church who at one time made a profession of faith and then walked away and so you know those sorts of issues come up and when we talk about the doctrine of perseverance of the saints uh, those who uh, deny this doctrine those who would teach uh, that one can lose their salvation, these are the matters that they typically will address. And so I want to deal with that today. But first of all, let me remind us of the verse from whence we have been working in this doctrine of perseverance, 1 John 5.13. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. And so here in 1 John 5.13, which we are classifying as the key verse to 1 John, John is addressing matters of assurance of salvation. That's our experience of perseverance. He also deals in other places in 1 John on the grounds of uh, our perseverance. But then he also, too, deals with those persons who walk away. And let me read that verse to you, 1 John 2.19. They went out from us, but they were not really of us. For if they had been of us, they would have remained with us. But they went out so that it would be shown that they all are not of us. 1 John 2, 19. And so we do know of people uh, who will make a profession of faith, but then they walk away. And so what's going on there? What's happening there? Well, there's a one writer that I have found very helpful in this regard. His name is Thomas Watson. He lived from 1620 to 1686, and he wrote a wonderful book called The Body of Divinity. And he deals with these issues. And let me just read to you some things that he has written about this issue uh, of the problems that we find when we're talking about the doctrine of perseverance. He first of all notes that there are those false professors, those hypocrites, those hypocrites who are only tied onto Christ by an external profession, they are not engrafted in him. And so he's talking there about those who have an association with the church, let's say. They have an external profession. However, they do not have an internal possession of faith. And then what Watson does, he then goes on to discussing um, those matters of perseverance in the life of true believers, wherein from time to time they will uh, fall into sin or they'll lapse in their uh, progression of growth. And he says here, uh, although believers do not fall away actually and lose all their grace, yet their grace may fail in degree, and they may make a great breach upon their sanctification. Grace may be dying, but not dead. As John writes in Revelation 3, 2, strengthen the things that are ready to die. Grace may be like a fire in the embers, though not quenched, yet the flame is gone out. So, what about those true believers who are experiencing a season of dryness or who are not growing in their faith or who perhaps by way of negligence they've uh, grown rather worldly? Interestingly enough, in our Baptist Faith and Message 2000, which is the doctrinal statement of the Southern Baptist Convention, in its article 
on the doctrine of perseverance, it has this to say, quote, Those whom God has accepted in Christ and sanctified by His Spirit will never fall away from the state of grace, but shall persevere to the end. Believers may fall into sin through neglect and temptation, whereby they grieve the Spirit, impair their graces and comforts, and bring reproach on the cause of Christ and temporal judgments on themselves. Yet they shall be kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. End quote. So even in the article on the doctrine of perseverance, the Baptist Faith and Message acknowledges that true believers will experience those seasons. And that's why we find verses in the New Testament that urge us on to love and to good deeds, uh, to stir us up to godliness, because there's the world, there's the flesh, there's the devil, there's all these forces that are ever coming against us. And it serves fair warning, uh, because if someone claims to be a Christian, and yet they are persisting in a lifestyle of sin, and they're not disturbed by that, then there are, there's good reasons to doubt whether that person is saved. And so they need to examine their heart. Uh, Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 13.5 that we're to examine ourselves to see whether we're in the faith. He says, Do you not know that Christ is in you, lest you fail the test? And so we find then that there are problems uh, that will crop up in conversations about perseverance because we do see these instances where people will either walk away or we'll see Christians who are genuine in their faith and yet they are struggling. And so I like what Thomas Watson then gives by way of instruction as to how we can strengthen ourselves in our faith, especially when we find ourselves beginning to either wane or slip. Uh, we know that uh, there's various reasons for this, and Watson points out two of them. He first of all points out what he calls the lively actings of grace and how they may be suspended. So it could be the case maybe we've found ourselves getting distracted or maybe overwhelmed by the things of life. Uh, John, for example, in Revelation 2, 4, he talks about how one of the churches to which he wrote uh, had left their first love. And so these sorts of things can certainly happen. Uh, or in Matthew 25, verse 4, uh, Jesus' parable of the virgins, those that were the wise virgins uh, who were true believers, they were slumbering. And so certainly the lively actings of grace may be suspended for a temporary period of time. Watson also knows, notes, secondly, that instead of grace working in the godly, corruption may work. Instead of patience, murmuring. Instead of heavenliness, earthliness. And so, though their grace be drawn no, he notes, yet it is not drawn dry. Grace, when it is at its lowest, shall revive and flourish, as when Samson had lost his strength. And so again, we may find ourselves going through seasons of dryness. Uh, we may find ourselves going through seasons where it may not seem like we're bearing much fruit. Um, and yet, uh, God is the one that keeps our faith, keeps us in grace, and the Spirit of God will stir us up again, and He may use a variety of methods, whether it be, tempta uh, whether it be testings or trials or those sorts of things. So we find then that there will be those times that do take place. So then how can God's people persevere? Well, Watson again notes the following. First, the truth of God. We must uh, acknowledge and focus ourselves on the Word of God because the Word of God is what nourishes us. Jesus reminds us in Matthew 4, verse 4, that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Second, in order to persevere, we need the power of God. We recognize that apart from the power of God, we cannot persevere in the faith. Thirdly, concerning how we're to persevere, being reminded of the fact that God has chosen us. And so we rest on him. Uh, we read in 1 John chapter uh, 4, verse 19, uh, it's not that the, the great thing that we love God, but that he first loved us. Fourthly, our union with Christ, our association with Christ, remembering who we are and whose we are. So these are some of the ways in which we practically can persevere in the faith by just being not only reminded of these truths, but exercising ourselves in them and then praying and asking the Spirit of God to once again warm our hearts uh, when they've grown cold, once again reinvigorating uh, our minds when they grow dull. 
And so these are issues that I call problems that are associated when we talk about the doctrine of perseverance. But praise be to God, we know that by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ and the indwelling Holy Spirit, the true believer will persevere no matter what obstacles they may experience along the way. So this is Pastor Malin Smith, New Hope Baptist Church of Watertown, New York, thanking you for viewing this video and bidding you godly hope for this day.